At a time of such challenge and crisis, let me tell you, friends, that we're very lucky to have that leadership. We're very lucky to have Nicola Sturgeon. Because conference, trust me on this, you don't have to spend too long at Westminster these days to realise what happens when that kind of solid leadership is literally nowhere to be found in government in Whitehall. Now, my job as your Westminster leader is to stand up here and give you all an update of events in London. <laughs> now, in fairness, it's a hard enough job at the best of times. But honestly, this year, especially with the chaos of the last few weeks, I barely know where to start. They often say that first impressions are important in any new job. Well, only a matter of weeks into their new roles, the disastrous duo of Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng have crashed the economy, sent the pound plummeting, put pension funds at risk, and created mayhem for mortgage holders. The Bank of England are having to spend up to £65 billion to prop up the guilt market, to stop pension funds from holding, and all because of the chaos caused by Truss and Curtin. The truth is, the new Prime Minister and her new Chancellor have made the worst first impression in the history of UK politics. Because the inequality and the incompetence of the budget will go down as one of the worst financial interventions in modern history. But by the way, don't simply take my word for it. Just ask the mini budget's very newest critic, Douglas Ross. But, conference, mind you, be quick, because no doubt he'll change his mind again before long, perhaps before the end of this conference speech. You know, there was at least one Tory who had the inside track on the disarray that would unfold. Now, I promise you that this will be the first and definitively the last time I'll ever quote Rishi Sunak at an SNP conference, but credit where it's due. He was right when he warned that the plans of Liz Truss were fairy tale economics. But what was once fairy tale economics used to bribe voters from the Tory members last summer has become everyone else's nightmare this autumn and winter. Because these aren't distant decisions on financial markets, the chaos of their choices will impact directly and painfully on ordinary households. Higher interest rates means higher mortgage costs. A weaker pound means food and fuel prices will go up even further. And the blinding incompetence of it will make it lean a longer and deeper recession. Tory incompetence comes with a massive price. And it will all be paid for the only way the Tories know how, by cutting public services and pushing more of our people into poverty. Already, they are gearing up to make real terms cuts to benefits in this middle of the cost of living crisis. And on the very same morning that they finally U-turned on their tax cut for the super rich, the Tories slipped out the real announcement that they would be slashing public services by £18 billion every year. Friends, the last decade of Tory austerity was only the start. The Resolution Foundation has predicted that the Chancellor's choices would mean cuts of £47 billion by the middle of this decade. Cuts at least as big as those by the original austerity chancellor, George Orban. It turns out that the new Tory plan is the same as the old Tory plan, austerity 2.0. So conference, here's a test for the new conservative rebels who are magically multiplying by the day. If they have any sense of morality, if they have any backbone, they will join us in stopping any real terms cuts to benefits and any return to austerity. Yeah. Conference, their Chancellor even had the cheek to say that the immorality at the heart of his budget was only a distraction. A distraction for goodness sake. But those in Scotland aren't distracted one little bit. We've got the message loud and clear during the shambles of the last few weeks. As our own Alison Thulis described it, this is now broke, broken Britain. Your homes, your pensions, 
Your incomes are not safe under Westminster control. It is, friends, a cost, a risk, a price that Scotland can't afford to pay any longer. Because, conference, the reality is the chaos of the last few weeks is now no exception. It has become the new normal of British politics. A pattern of constant crisis now defines Westminster. It started when they boarded the big red Brexit bus in 2016, and they've been driving towards disaster ever since. We all thought that it would be Boris Johnson who would eventually drive it over the cliff. Well, in fairness, he did come pretty close. But it turns out he has left Truss and Curtang to drive the UK economy over the cliff edge. And the sheer stupidity of their grand plan is becoming clearer. Exit the EU only to fall into the arms of the International Monetary Fund. And who can forget that these are the same people who once promised to take back control? Well, the last few weeks are the clearest evidence as just how dangerously they have lost control. We are now left with the remaining rump of a desperate Tory party, reckless right-wing wreckers who should never be allowed anywhere near the privilege of power ever, ever again. So let us, at this conference, make a promise of our own. Let's never allow them control over our lives, ever, ever to have control over the Scottish people ever again.